I am so extremely nervous for this video. Uh, hi, hello, my name is Fana. If you are new here, I make videos about Minerva, my experience attending this university. Um, I used to be a student at UWC Costa Rica and I graduated in 2020, so it's been a couple of years now. Um, I made a video about my UWC application and reacting to it three years after I submitted it and it did really well, you guys seem to really like it. And I've gotten a lot of messages from you asking for my application, to read it, um, to help you with yours and I have always said no because I feel really uncomfortable with the idea of sharing my application. I think it's because I partially in some ways feel like it's an unfair advantage to give it to some people. Um, and in this case, I mean, if I'm giving it to all of you and it's accessible to everyone in an equal way, I guess it's not unfair. Minerva's application is built in a way um, where you highlight six accomplishments. It's not just answering a prompt. I think I talk about it more in detail in my What is Minerva video. I'll put a link up here. And um, I also talk about it in much more detail in terms of how to actually get into Minerva and what each step looks like in my how to get into Minerva video. I'll also put it up here and I'll put a link in the description. But generally it's six accomplishments and you have 500 characters to describe the accomplishment and then 500 characters to what is it the significance of the accomplishment and i believe this application hasn't changed too much and you get to provide evidence for each of the accomplishments and that is something i went crazy with i was like you know what let's use these evidence sections which have like not as much of a limit right because you kind of just get to attach files um, I just used that to my advantage and I put so much evidence for everything. The process and how I wrote about it, again highlighted in other videos, so I will just be reading it and reacting to it. It has now been, I want to say more than three years. Like I started my application in August of 2019 and today is February 2nd of 2022. It's been a while. I had to dig to find it because it was attached to my UWC email, but I did find it. Uh, so I'm just gonna pull it up. I also want to say I don't think I have the craziest accomplishments in the world and I think a really big part of the reason I want to make this video is because I want to show you that you don't have to do crazy things to get into Minerva. Um, it's just about how you frame it, it's about how you present it, your confidence, and um, the detail you provide, the evidence you give. Um, so shall we get into it? Oh, okay. The first one is Free the Children. If you have seen my video from UWC, it will ring a bell. So actually you also have to indicate your start date and your end date. So my start date is September 2016. My end date is June 2018. So that's one of my oldest accomplishments, I think. All the other ones are from a more recent time frame from like when I had applied. At my high school in Canada, I was elected co-president of Free the Children Club following a year's experience as a member. This club is organized in collaboration with a movement called Me to We. It supports developing communities and local social initiatives by building awareness around education, clean water, food, opportunity, and healthcare. As a president, I organized and planned meetings and initiatives. Most notably, I introduced a battery drive to help youth with zinc deficiencies. Then I described the significance. For the election, I presented a speech and was selected from 10 applicants. I dedicated four hours weekly. I launched and organized a battery recycling campaign to keep toxic waste out of the environment and aid kids with zinc deficiencies. Each AA battery has enough zinc to save the lives of six children. The first year, 700 batteries were collected and 900 the following. Since then, it has become part of the annual club schedule. In two years, the 1,600 batteries have helped up to 9,600 children. So you can see that I literally went in and I did like the math for them. And that is from what I've understood what they want you to do. They really want quantitative values. Yeah, I literally picked one initiative and I counted how many people I actually helped, how many hours I actually put in, how many people were trying to get the president role. So I have my evidence. The first one is a reference contact. Um, I'm pretty sure all of the accomplishments 
give you like a little section for the reference contact and I picked the teacher that I had at my school that was supervising the club. I also had a letter from her. She wrote a letter um, to I guess give a good background on my work in the club and it was such a beautiful letter. Like I actually got to read all of them because I had to input them myself. And then I had another letter from um, Madeline, who is my friend from Ottawa. She was a co-president, so she was working with me and um, that was really great. Also really nicely written. And then the final evidence I had for this accomplishment was a Facebook group screenshot um, of a holiday hamper congratulatory post. And then I think you get about 500 characters to write evidence notes. So I wrote the letters from both my club teacher supervisor and my co-president are evidence of my dedication, engagement, and initiative in the club. Moreover, the Facebook posts are proof of my communication with other club members. There we go. The next one was my only academic accomplishment. And to be completely honest, I feel like it wasn't something I was super, super proud of, but I did want to show some evidence of like academic rigor and I don't know how to put it. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> Model United Nations at UWCCR is an annual event that invites students from the top schools in Costa Rica to debate with UWC students on relevant topics. This was my first time participating in MUN and the only. Uh, and although competing against many experienced candidates, I was awarded best position paper. I represented Sri Lanka in the United Nations environmental program debating on marine plastic litter and microplastics. So for the significance, I said, I was competing with 25 other candidates and was awarded best position paper. There was one best position paper award given in each of the eight committees. The conference consisted of 136 candidates representing more than 70 nationalities, most of whom had previously taken part in this event. My award placed me among the top 5% of written works presented at the conference. See, it's like really like pulling on little details because in my mind it wasn't that crazy of an accomplishment, um, but I, I just tried to like pick out the details that made it look really impressive. So for the evidence, I had a reference contact. I had a letter from um, that same reference contact. And then the allotment sheet, which was um, who, like what student was assigned to which committee, and then the scan of the actual award. The evidence notes say, the letter provided is proof of the number of delegates within the MUN committee and my role within the conference. The allotment sheet lists all 136 candidates, confirming the data previously mentioned. Note that the white spaces belong to the names of the students from other top schools in Costa Rica who are not studying at the United World College in Costa Rica. Finally, a scan of the Best Position Award paper is attached. My third accomplishment... <laughs> oh god. Okay. From the people I've talked to, um, it seems like UWC is a classic accomplishment to include in your Minerva application. And there's really no measure of what is a cliche accomplishment, I don't believe, so I did include it. And uh, it says, I told my dad I wanted to study abroad at age 10. That's when I discovered the United World Colleges and fell in love with the endless opportunities such an experience would bring. I was eager to learn more about the world we live in in a diverse, open-minded and accepting environment. I applied in 2016, but was rejected. I quickly picked myself back up, attended UWC Pearson seminar on youth leadership. PSYL, reapplied the following year and was admitted to UWC Costa Rica as class 2020. It has a lot of like, um, what do you call that? Like essences of my UWC application. I feel like I took in some of those inspiring sentences into this one. On Fridays, I babysit. Shocker. After which I go home to rest. I use Fridays to de-stress, evaluate, and assess. Oh my gosh. Oh, I also wrote celebrate and rejuvenate. That's even worse. Description of the significance. UWC had been a dream of mine for over six years. In preparation for the application, I made sure to consistently perform well in and outside of school. Got to. The application process lasted seven months and consisted of three phases. <laughs> the first was a written application and a creative aspect. Then the interview with the Canadian National Committee and then an interview with the WCCR. I said that I was one of the 54 admitted students from a pool of over 400 applicants. I'm also one of just 29 students selected to study abroad. So 
within the Canadian National Committee, there were 54 Canadian students admitted, but then 29 of them were not going to study at Pearson College, which is the UWC in Canada. Um, and then my evidence was a reference contact who was the head of the Canadian Committee. Then an email with a number confirmation from UWC National Committee, like the number of students. Then I attached my rejection letter along with my offer to apply to PSYL. Then the link to the PSYL website with some information. And then um, I got the email for like pass to the next round, um, like the different uh, phases of the application. <laughs> and then the class of 2020 list and the acceptance letter for UWC Costa Rica. And my notes were the list of admitted Canadian students and the UWC National Committee email is provided to confirm the data mentioned above. Computational science is the biggest major at Minerva. So the fact that I use the word data is probably quite applicable now that I think about it. Good on me, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, I said that my admission email to the UWC Piercing Seminar on Youth Leadership is attached to demonstrate my attendance and the links to the PSYL website explain the program and the qualities they look for in an applicant. And then the UWC final update email is proof that I applied to the movement two years in a row and the other two emails confirm my admission as class of 2020. This one had a lot of evidence. Oh my gosh, I'm getting fluff on my bed. Ah, okay. Accomplishment number four is being an RA. Sorry, my camera just stopped filming. I hope I didn't lose any footage. Mm. I work hard to bring unity to my residents and encourage the active participation of all 26 members. I aim to provide a safe, secure, and positive environment by promoting rules and policies as well as supporting and caring for my community. You can tell this is written in the present tense because I was actually still an RA when I wrote this application. Um, which feels weird to say now, um, which is probably why I'm struggling so much. Active pers participation, hard to bring unity and encourage the- oh my god, I'm having such a hard time. <laughs> but anyway, the significance. I was elected RA in my residence among 14 students. Prior to the election, I attended five preparatory sessions. Once chosen, I completed training in first aid, wellness, communication, and more. This role requires that I be flexible and available for any of the 214 students in my community. See? I'm saying 214 students, but in reality, did I speak to every 214 students? No. But I could have or should have been there for any that wished to speak to me. I think that's like what- the point I'm trying to make is use values that are true like there were 214 students in UWC Costa Rica while I was attending and while I was an RA but I wouldn't have spoken to all of them there were other RAs and they might have spoken to other people but the point is I would have been available for all of them I hope I'm getting my point across but anyway as an RA I attended a meeting with my co-RA at least once a week with my residence coordinator every Friday and with the entire RA team bi-weekly I also host a bi-weekly residence meeting for our 26 members. And then my evidence was a reference contact who is the RA head, and then a letter from my residence coordinator who is like the adult in charge of each residence. And then the um, email of like the meeting schedule for, I think it was Google Calendar, and um, it showed like the length of two plus hours for all of the meetings. A screenshot from the RA messenger group and um, planning from a residence meeting. The notes said the RA application email supports the statement that there were trainings to attend prior to being RA. The reference letter is evidence of the rigorous selection process as well as my responsibilities and dedication. The meeting and orientation agendas along with the Google Calendar meeting invitation demonstrates the time and effort I devoted. My Facebook messages and posts as well as the picture is evidence of the impact I am making and the care I have for this leadership position. The next one is the Memory Project. So, the Memory Project is a nonprofit international organization. UWCCR partners with its portrait program. The aim is to cultivate global kindness by painting portraits as special gifts to fundraise for disadvantaged youth around the world. This year, I am leading the project within my community, brainstorming and organizing fundraising initiatives as well as guiding the participants with their paintings. This project combines my passions for visual arts and my desire to help others. I really liked this one actually. I remember being really excited about this. And this was the only one relating to my art. It doesn't matter now since I was admitted to Minerva, but I kind of regret not putting any art as like one of my accomplishments. Um, 
like my training in art or anything to do with like art that I sold or I don't know I just didn't have any of that there okay significance my team of 14 members meet for two hours weekly to work on our portraits last year for fundraising I proposed and led candy grams within our school community which raised $180 this year we are still in the painting process but have already raised $300 which will be gifted alongside our finalized portraits. Our portraits have helped 28 children facing difficult challenges feel valued and important, demonstrating that we care about their well-being and that we honor their resilience. It's kind of cute. So the reference contact was the art teacher I had at UWCR who also wrote a letter of recommendation or like a, an evidence letter, I guess. And then I had photos of the portraits and then um, posters and posts for the Candy Gram initiative and the fundraising poster for um, the current year that I was working on. And then there was a link to the Memory Project website. My evidence notes say the reference letter attached is evidence of the hours and effort I have dedicated to this project. Furthermore, it confirms that I have assumed the position of activity leader this year. The photos are evidence of the artworks other members and I have created. In addition, the posters I made showed my initiative and passion for this project. Lastly, the receipt and invoice show the total funds raised for the memory project. Finally, we are here, um, number six. I think I've described this one before, um, but because there's no impact on another person, it felt a little weird to include this as an accomplishment, but I think I made it work and um, it still was something I was really proud of. So I would encourage you to put something in even if you don't think it has like the biggest impact it's okay if you're proud about it and if you are able to like create quantitative measures for it okay last summer i took a five-week solo trip across five countries and ten cities in asia a region i had never visited i've always been curious about the world and its people this is what drove me to apply to ulbc and initiated my desire to travel for this reason, from age 12, I made it a priority to gain work experience primarily as a ballet instructor in order to save enough money to later explore. It took courage and initiative to be the first among my family and friends to travel alone. So this was a strange one too because I had to kind of include other accomplishments to act as evidence. Okay, the significance. I think this is what really matters. With the $3,000 I set aside, I worked hard to plan the most ideal, safest, and affordable route. I made my experience more authentic by using my UWC network to stay with locals. To navigate diverse cities and cultures alone, I had to quickly adapt. My trip improved my problem solving and independence, thereby building my confidence and courage. It also enabled me to reflect. I realized that the hectic pace of life can cloud perspectives and priorities. I learned to appreciate what I already have. So you can see there's not a lot of quantitative values, which is the issue. And I don't know if this is a successful successful accomplishment. Also, my battery light is flashing, so I'm gonna go a bit quickly. Okay, evidence. I had a YouTube video link and it was just my vlog on um, my trip in Malaysia. I had planning documents, itinerary, flight bookings, a letter from my employer, and then photos. The letter from my ballet instructor employer is included as evidence of the hard work I put in from a young age to become more financially independent. The YouTube video linked is evidence of my adventures. In addition, the picture of me and my friends taken while traveling demonstrates my immersion into the local culture. And finally, the planning documents prove the work I put into organizing and researching my trip. <sighs> okay, that's done. I feel like I am still proud of a lot of those things, but I definitely remember feeling a little bit scared um, that some of those wouldn't be traditionally impressive. And I just wanna say that if you're also worried about that, if you're applying, um, don't be just be yourself and be confident i'm sure what you've done is amazing and if you are already attending or you have already attended i hope you enjoyed um listening to what i wrote to get into minerva thank you so much for watching if you want to see my other content about minerva about my life um about the things i'm interested in anything i mentioned art fashion please subscribe it would mean the world to me we made it to 6k recently which is incredible uh, honestly a dream and i am so happy that you're here if you made it to the end of the video please comment below put a little like world emoji to tell me that you made it all the way to the end have an incredible week thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon